Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 where we're going to start off by having a, a brief discussion of the, the slightly awkward topic of Mike. As you've seen before, this is the stony moon of Andragon, and this is the one where Mike has decided it would be fun to go in and try and harvest everything, that's abs absolutely everything that's on this planet. And so he started off, as, as, I, as I said last week, with the stone, copper, vitamalange, more stone, iron, cryonite, and so on, a bit of coal from down here. And that's all being fed into the train systems here, and then being, being taken up to, the, up to space in relatively sensible quantities, along with large amounts of stone, because stone is the main thing we want. Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm still not quite sure why he fed the stone into this, this warehouse rather than this one, but never mind, that's not my problem. Um, this does mean that we will get a large amount of stone flowing through from this planet, and then a certain amount of other miscellanea, and that's going to need to be dealt with. So as a sort of start on trying to mine everything on this planet, he's put down a, a little area over here that's turning the oil that comes out from the core processing into into, sol into uh, petroleum gas, and then into sulfur, and then into sulfuric acid, uh, along with a bit of iron that's coming up from over here. Uh, and this is useful because it means he's going to have, this, this way he's going to have some acid that he can use for when he goes out and starts trying to attack things like uh, this uranium patch down here, and this one down here. Uh, if there's any imacite on here, he'll need it for that as well, but I don't see any. I think this probably, this moon probably doesn't have any any emicide. Having a little bit of cryonite and the vitamilange is probably quite enough r uh, rare resources for one planet, or planetoid I should say. Another advantage of this is it means it's less oil to ship away, however I do wonder a little bit how the um, how the system is going to cope with him both putting the oil into here to make put it into barrels and to take it off this way to make it into acid. I'm not sure which is going to get priority. Maybe it's going to be a little bit of each, or maybe because this one's a pump it'll pull it through more quickly. I'm not quite sure, but it'll be interesting to see how much acid he actually gets. He has so far got 26,000 of it, so clearly some of it is capable of, of coming through this way, and he, if, if necessary, he could always end up just rotating this machine round a bit like this um, to make sure that it won't take in any of the oil, and then then all of the oil can go over here and maybe put in some sort of prioritization a prioritization system. There are many many possibilities uh, of which none none have currently been implemented, but to be honest, none are currently required. The big question, of course, is what to do with all of this stuff that's coming up from that planet. So at the moment, it's coming up in a train. It's then pulled out of here and put into a spaceship and taken over to Norvis orbit, where we've got an, an array of systems systems up here. So we've got, what, what, let's have a look, what have we got? So the, the miscellaneous stuff comes out here. We then have the stone going into here to be taken down when we have a requirement of stone. And that was the main reason, that was the reason we went out to Andragon in the first place. And by we, I mean Mike. Um, because we had a shortage of stone down on Norvis, so we thought, let's go to a stone primary. And then Mike started moving goalposts around like it's, like it's his new hobby or something. <laughs> Um, conveniently, there's room for three stations in across here. So he's got um, that one doing the stone. This one is getting in um, miscellaneous other things like uh, iron, copper, rare metals, and coal. Same for that one. And then imacite, vitamilland, uranium, and cryonite coming out of these two. So it looks like all of the other things are going into this warehouse up here, which makes me wonder what this one is for. Presumably anything else that comes through. And there shouldn't be anything, anything else. That, I think, is everything that comes from this planet. But maybe, oh, there'll be, no, there'll be a few barrels and things here and there. So maybe, maybe eventually, maybe. So perhaps there'll be a few other, one or two other things. I'm not quite sure. But eventually, anyway, other things will go out this way and go into the normal disposal system. But from here, we have a separate train that will collect up all of those miscellaneous things that are coming out of here and then take them down to Norvis where they will emerge from the space elevator and it will be dropped off in this station up here which puts them into a warehouse and then we've got a sorting system going on here and these are going out to lots of different stations so we've got one we've got the standard one for stone and this is the one that's being brought in mass quantities just to top up any any stone supplies we need then we've got some being brought over here um, as uh, the copper being brought over here the iron more iron over here so we've got two iron stations and I'll explain why in a moment and then up here I guess these are going to be for other things like um, I can't read really, I can't trace these belts very easily by eye um, uranium and uh, coal, we've got coal, so presumably uranium up here and I, I, I don't know, but those are the sort of things that we're, pa we're passing through, uh, what, are you, what are you, oh and rare metals, right that one, so we're getting, getting the array of them up here, and we're going to treat these ones as if they're mines, and so they're going to be a medium priority, so as I've, I've mentioned before, we have the stuff that comes from core mining over here, the core mining byproducts that come pouring out of this system, these are the high priority, these are the ones we want to use up first, because uh, they are Unlimited, and they are will just come. They're just coming through at a steady rate, so we might as well use them up while we've got them available. And because if we don't use them up, then we have to turn them into landfill like this. And we, to be honest, we have more than enough landfill already, as you can tell by the the sheer number of warehouses down here for, that are filling up with it. So we want to use those first. We want to use, and we want to use what's being brought in from other planets. It doesn't really matter. Stuff being brought in from other planets is probably quite a good one to use next because that's also unlimited, but we do just has a certain amount of transport cost with it. The mines, I think, but I think we've been treating that as low priority, and the mines as a medium priority. So we will use up 
there's no power in this mine. Um, but we will use up mines. We will use up the the core mining byproducts first. Then we'll use up the mines, and then we go over to the uh, the, um, the the infinite supplies from other planets. I think. And so at the moment we are currently aren't using the stone from here, which is why this whole system has gone to is sort of kind of backed up and gone to sleep. But it does mean we should should end up using these ones at least at least we use this one before we use this one down here because this is the iron that's coming through from Oliran, and that is an infinite supply from an iron planet. And so it, by that logic, it's the lowest priority I I don't really know we kind of want to get rid of all of this so it might can uh, complete his goal of trying to uh, completely resource harvest an entire planet so that deals with the things that are being dug up out of normal mines or coming out of core fragments on Norvis. So the um, the the uh, uranium, the coal, rare metals, iron, and copper. We then also have the re exotic materials that are coming from Andragon. So we've got imasite ore, we've got cryonite ore, and we've got uh, vitamelange or vitus vita whatever it's called. What is it? Vitamelange. Okay, great. And those are passed off along these long underground green underground belts that then bring it up here, up 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 here, across here, and then into here. And I think Mike is intending to have a sort of a miniature process processing facility in place over here. So, so far he's got as far as, um, well, not very far at all. He's got as far as crushing the imasite uh, ore, and that's going to produce a certain amount of uh, sand, which can be turned into into uh, silicon, which I think is then used in, in a later step. But I don't know if that's going to be enough. But this is the starting point of a slightly larger processing facility that's going to go in, I assume, going to go in this area here, and is going to deal with the the imasite, the cryonite, and the and the vitamelange, and turn those into useful things that can then be passed around the rest of the base. Now, exactly how this is going to be done, I'm not quite sure because we don't. What we we do use imasite down here, so the imasite could certainly be shipped over, put onto the bus, put onto the train system to be taken up to orbit, that sort of thing. That's fine. That one will go nicely. Cryonite. There are a few places that use cryonite up down here. So I know, for example, over here, the um, the module city does, and maybe. Maybe there's one or two other places as well, so we could get rid of that. But as far as I'm aware, there is nowhere on the planet using uh, Vitamelange products. So that's going to need... We're, I'm not sure where he's going to use a sink as a sink for that. But, you know, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll find somewhere. Maybe we can ship it up into Norbit and just shove it in somewhere and, and get rid of it that way. I'm, 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 I'm sure we can find a way to deal with it. Back over on Andragon, the current plan is fine for all of the solids. It's not going to be too difficult to ship out all of this stone and copper and so on. It can just be dumped into the spaceship, as you've seen. It's going to take a very, very long time to get rid of it, because there's a relatively small quantity of it being put into the spaceship each time, but it should work. The liquids, on the other hand, there's quite a lot of crude oil on this planet, and also quite a lot of mineral water. And so I believe his plan for those is to dig them up and then have a, a fluid spaceship, and it's going to take all of the mineral water uh, from places like this over to... Um, Kothar in order to be turned into the Iridium because there's a, a big sink of it over there. We need to use a lot of it up for that. And then probably take the oil back over to Norvis for, for processing there because that's about the only place we use oil at the moment. And so there has been expansion in the Anacrotite production as well, or at least in the Anacrotite logistics, um, transporting it around. I built an additional three um, Stardust spaceships with names such as Stardust Express, Stardust in the Order of the Phoenix, and Stardust 3 with a Vengeance, which is what happens when you let chat name your spaceships, and I'm, I, I quite like some of those. <laughs> and so they can fly in and out. For, uh, they're, they're basically, having five of those means that we should get a steady supply of Anacrotite arriving over on Talos being processed down into the, uh, in, into the Anacrium. However, However, I do notice we seem to have quite a lot of spaceships stacked up here, which makes me wonder if something has gone wrong. Uh, okay, we've loaded up this spaceship. Uh, ah, yes, it has indeed. I was, now, I was afraid this would happen. So what's happened here is that all the warehouses have filled up and therefore we're not able to unload the remaining uh, 7,800 sulfur and 10,000 and so on out of, the sp out of this spaceship and therefore it's not able to fill up, therefore it's not able to depart and that's a problem. Okay, well... The reason this has happened is because each spaceship will load up with when it's when it's over in Norvis, it will load up with what the, uh, the, the 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 system seems to think it's missing at the time. So this one's clearly th over here. We've clearly thought, well, we've got a bit of a shortage of sulfur, so let's bring in a hu uh, quite a lot of it, and then we've ended in ended up bringing over a lot more than we know what to do with. So I think the answer is going to be to put in another warehouse down here and then split the sulphur belt off so it comes up here, feeds into this warehouse and then back out again and that gives us a little bit more buff, well a lot more buffer space for all of the all of the uh, sulphur uh, because at the moment it has just taken over the world. 
Uh, and the problem is, all of the other spaceships are going to have rather a lot of sulfur as well, so I might need to actually put in multiple uh, warehouses along here to, to, to fill all that up. In. And that's a bit of a problem. This is the downside of using the, hey, hey, remote place, how much stuff do you need? I'll just pick that up and bring it over, which is fine when you have a single ship doing the, doing the route, but when you have multiple ships doing, doing the route, as we have here, you can end up with this problem where each one loads up the full supply, and then this area is not capable of dealing with five times the full supply arriving in fairly quick succession. So this is a bit of a problem. I mean, we could get around it to a, a slight extent by maybe putting in another tank over here and having the and having that fill up with uh, sulfuric acid, which would burn through some of the sulfur. But I strongly suspect the next spaceship to come in will also have an enormous amount of sulfur on it as well, because that's just the way the way things seem to go at the moment. Fortunately, it'll then start to swing back the other way a bit, and um, and each spaceship will we won't bring out any sulfur next time because there'll be loads and loads of it out here. But it is something I need to come out and fix. So this is this is a, this is a problem. I didn't didn't think my cunning plan all the way through when I put this together. Uh, so yeah, that's that's going to be tricksy. But once that's sorted, hopefully the spaceships will then start flying through in reasonably quick success, reasonably quickly, and we'll have a, a steady flow of the of the nacrotite coming through. This is disappointing because. I thought I got this working fairly well, and having and having five spaceships doing the route seemed like a great idea. But yeah, maybe I should have gone with Mark's count it in, count it out system, um, because that way you you never end up with a ridiculous amount of stuff. I might have had to increase the num the numbers a bit, but at least I wouldn't have had a crazy crazy over overflow like this. This also explains why the sulphur supply on Norvis was a limiting factor in how often the ships could take off. So they'd be sitting over in Norvis orbit, down here, uh, waiting for the, and just st steadily having a, a gentle stream of sulphur coming in through the system here, and filling them up. And then once they finally filled up, they would then be able to leave. Uh, or, I say filled up, once they got the, the request, requested amount, they'd be able to leave. But the thing that kept them there the longest was filling up with the sulphur, which is sort of convenient because it meant that uh, it, it meant there was plenty of time for these energy beam receivers to make sure they were all the way back up to full temperature um, as it is well they've had a little bit of time to cool down so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to see how that goes and it's a little bit of a concern we also had a problem with one of the spaceships that sort of very very briefly touched down here and then took off again and I've talked before about how I think the uh, the race condition problem is happening and what's going on there um, and we thought we'd fixed it with this system over here which watches for when there is a ship here before it sends out the final tick that's required for the ship to launch but but one of the ships did manage to land and immediately depart, and it wasn't it wasn't due to there already being a launch signal from a previous ship because there was a big gap between the two of them. But something funny happened, and I have to admit I'm not really sure what. Uh, but we're going to have a bit of a think about how to fix this and how to make this better for the for the future. Uh, the biggest problem with that though was it got part way back before I before I realised and turned it round again. So it got to maybe about here or so. So turn it around, send it back to Stardust to actually fill up properly, and that meant it ran out of fuel when it got to about here on its way back to um, on its way back to uh, Talos. But I did manage to rescue it by telling it to take a diversion to Njord orbit and park there, uh, which took it about an hour to get to at limp speed. Uh, and then I was able to fly out with the deep space exploration ship and my own personal one and hook it up to the deep space exploration ship and pump some of the ion stream across to refuel it. And once it had been refueled, it was then able to fl fly on and do the rest of its route. And it's now it's now working fine. Uh, apart from the unloading problem at the other end that I alluded to earlier. So, you know, some progress, but uh, things aren't working quite as nicely as I would like them to. I also realised that I wasn't bringing in the um, the, the uh, methane ice from um, deep from deep space in the way I intended to. So I've uh, hooked up. So I've, I've now properly hooked up this transmitter and receiver, which comes brings the signal out to Stardust here, which then sends it onto this belt to tell it to let the uh, the methane ice flow through whenever there's a demand over in um, over on Talos. The problem is that uh, this belt down here is broken, I missed a piece out here, and so we're not getting that flow coming through. So again, that's another thing I need to fix when I come out here. But yeah, it should be a very, very easy fix, and then we'll have a, a nice steady supply of methane ice coming out of the drills over here. And it's another thing that this ship is quite capable of transporting. Over on Talos, things have been going well, I think. Uh, we've got a nice steady flow of uh, crushed nacrotite coming through, which admittedly is going to stop at some point in the not-too-distant future for the reasons we've just been discussing. But at the moment, it's working quite nicely. I put in some extra centrifuges down here that are making the crystals for out of the um, out out of the powder and the refined, uh, and that's so that's meant I've now got a bit more flow, a bit more throughput down here with a few more crystals coming through, and that means that we can then have a few more of these furnaces running and have a slightly higher output of both of the two things that we actually want. The downside of this is it means I ha I have upgraded this belt across here to a green belt, and that means we're now pulling it out of the logistics system here faster than we're making it at, at the other end because we're making a blue belt rate at the other end and we're now pulling out to green belt which is like 50% faster or something and so we now we won't be able the system won't be able to keep up basically we won't be able to produce the uh, the crushed as fast as we're using it up over here which is a bit of a shame because I liked having that sort of quite neatly balanced before 
I've played around with the numbers of the things that we're bringing in as well. Over here, I discovered that the first thing to run out when the system was running low was the uh, Vitalic Reagent, these dark green bottles. So I've increased the number of those we're asking for by about 50% or so. I also found that we've got crazy amounts of iron ingots that we don't seem to really be getting through. So I've decreased the number of those we're asking for. And I've also dropped the amount of sulfur we're asking for because it's filling up these warehouses quite a lot. And so that should hopefully keep everything around here under a bit a bit more under control. We shouldn't have any overflow in these warehouses, fingers crossed. And uh, we should, but we should, while still having plenty of everything we need in order to make produce the resources. I think now, th despite what I said a few weeks ago, I think that one a spaceship when it comes out should be able to bring enough resources, all these miscellaneous resources, in order to make an entire spaceship's worth of nacrotite crystals and naquium. Uh, and that is because most mostly because these things don't stack very highly at all. You see, crystals up to 20, ingots only go up to 10. So even though it takes a lot of different resources to actually make the Naquium, those resources stack up much, much more highly. So you get 100 for plastic, 200 for cryonite, and, and so on and so on. And so I think we can bring enough over in the spaceship to still be able to produce a, an entire spaceship's worth of the of the resources over here. And so this train over here, I've, I've now got this one set up to watch for a second of inactivity because that seemed like a reasonably suitable way to go. It means if it ever does fill up, it'll go almost immediately. Um, and also if, the, uh, if there's any ever any interruptions in the in the stream of stuff coming in, then it'll go immediately. But in the rest of the time, it's going to be it's going to wait there, and, and as long as there's a steady stream of, of output coming through, it's going to wait for as, for as long as necessary. It also means that if it comes down here and there is loads and loads of stuff in the warehouse, it'll wait until the warehouse is empty before it leaves. Um, and so one second of inactivity is plenty for that. And then it goes back up to the top, back up the, up the elevator, the top of Talos, where it then stops over here, where it'll unload all of the uh, the crystals and the ingots that will get passed around into the system here, and then it'll pick up anything that's been brought out from from Norbit, which will go out through the warehouses here and be reloaded into the train for it to take back down again and unload here. And so to make sure the train doesn't just spend its time going round and round in circles with, with nothing on, on board, I've put in a five minutes of inactivity thing here. So it looks it looks as if it's had, got five minutes of inactivity and it's completely unloaded, then it'll come back down again immediately uh, to see if there's any more Naquim available. And after five minutes, there's a pretty good chance there'll be at least some of it to pick up. It'll also set off immediately if it's complete if it's uh, unloaded all of the uh, stuff it wants to get rid of and it's got and it's completely filled back up again. So this signal here is to tell it to depart because the, all of the uh, all of the belts trying to fill it up are full and also a five seconds of inactivity just to make sure it doesn't leave as soon as it arrives in the station. So between them, these two will make sure the train will co will come down again if it's got if it's got completely filled up. It'll come down immediately, but if it hasn't, then it'll come down every five minutes to see if there's a load of stuff down here to pick up. And this seems to be working pretty well, especially we're now with the slightly increased rate that the anaquium is coming through down here it means that we we we're, we're not we're not getting to the one second of inactivity perhaps i should put another signal being sent up back up to orbit and tell the train not to bother leaving if the um, if this warehouse is completely empty because that'd be a bit pointless and there you can see the uh, the, the two, back two wagons have, well the back wagon has filled up now it'd be a bit silly to have the train leave and come down if there's nothing on, um, it's picked up from up top and nothing and, and nothing to bring down as well so we might might have a bit of a play around with the numbers there just to make sure it doesn't depart when it shouldn't but uh, at the moment this is working pretty well and I'm I'm generally happy with it. I talked before about how there was a bit of a, a bit. I had a bit of a worry about the uh, the vulcanite coming out of here, being turned into that's being turned into the pyroflux because we need the pyroflux for making the uh, making an aquarium. But if the beryllium system just shuts down and goes to sleep forever, then we'll never get any more uh, vulcanite brought out to here. Now there is still tw twenty five thousand in here, but there was thirty two thousand in it a week or so ago when I looked at it before, or maybe two weeks ago. So it is definitely getting used up. So. I've run an additional Vulcanite belt from the Vulcanite warehouse over here that's going to carry it over from there. So we've got the two supplies coming in now from the Vulcanite area and from the Beryllium area, and they're both going to feed the same Pyroflux supply. So I think that should keep it, um, it, it running nicely. We, we, we can always be sure that there will be Vulcanite available for the Pyroflux, and if one of the ships is going back and forth a lot more than the other, then eventually that's going to be the one that ends up bringing over all the Vulcanite. But that's fair enough because we need the Vulcanite, and if, that's one, if that thing is, if that um, system is using it, then we might as well have it bring it over. Like that, so I think this is going to work quite nicely. I've also made further tweaks to which um, beryllium systems will, will will run. So previously, we have lots and lots of these systems being fed by the train system here. So we're bringing in the beryl ore from um, around the planet, and then we're turning through it, turning it into beryllium to be shipped out at, back over to Norbit. Uh, but we're also bringing in the core chunks, and I'd rather use the core chunks by preference because that way I might not have to build a new mine for a bit longer. And so we're using, we, yeah, we want to use those as the priority, and so they're being uh, ch churned through first over here. And I had a system down here that was watching to see if there was more than if there was less than 60,000 beryllium in Norbit then we start making from here as well but the problem was 
I, I couldn't put it on. I couldn't put a similar blocker on the output here because this is doing. This is bringing it out from the core mining with this system and the not core mining with this system. And so I put the, uh, the on this one. I put the blocker on the input. So here we're again watching for less than sixty thousand. So this will only run if we've got a shortage in over in Norbit, and we're keeping this a little bit calmer as well. I do notice that this seems to be struggling a little bit which is a bit of a concern, um, and it seems to be due to an overload of either stone or um, core fragments down here. So is that because, yes, that's because this train has filled up, this, 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 this warehouse has filled up, and um, we're not taking the scrap away anymore. Um, and that's because the beryllium ship isn't flying backwards and forwards, and so we've got a problem there, because we don't have anywhere to dispose of the, um, of, of the junk that's produced from the core processing. So how am I going to deal with this? I'm also going to eventually fill up on the beryllium along here, so that's going to be a problem too. We might need to send the beryllium ship over just to pick up all the all the stuff that's in orbit, or you know, try and find ways of using more beryllium. Or uh, yeah, this is slightly problematic because we've now got a lot of junk that we can't get rid of. I guess the answer is going to be to be put putting that into this train as well and sending it away that way, or perhaps putting it into another um, another spaceship from orbit up here. Perhaps I could put it into the one that's back going back over to uh, that does the Stardust run. I could I could feed it into this spaceship um, and just chuck in whatever's available, and then when it gets to uh, Norbit, it can unload it into into the uh, disposal system over there. Some setup will be required for that to work, and also sque possibly squeezing in extra stations and things. I, um, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Okay, this the, yeah, this could work quite nicely because the Stardust ship doesn't really bring anything back, and so if it bring, brought back a load of junk, it could dump this into here, into this warehouse, and the train could take it away. Um, instead of putting it into here with the memory cable cards. Yeah, that could work quite nicely. I think that might be something I'll, something we'll work on next time because it does look like we have a serious problem there with the amount of, with the, with the throughput of, the, of these resources. Okay, so that is another thing to do. Um, either that or we just find a way to get through an enormous quantity of beryllium which we have over here on the Talos ship. Uh, but we need these to, get, but we need this ship to be ready to, why is the ship not departing? Oh, have I asked for too much Vulcan? Oh yes, yes, as Mark pointed out to me, this ship is not departing because it is waiting for 7.3 thousand yellows. So that is a thing I need to fix. I uh, will do that next time, and then this ship will be able to depart. It will take away an enormous amount of junk, bring over at least a little bit of beryllium, uh, which will probably fill up these warehouses over here, but never mind, and then go back again to get a load more junk. So I think that should sort this, that should, yes, if I, if I fix the problems I've created, that should help quite a lot. And this is happening. Because over here on Talos, I've got this this thing down here, which I talked about last week, creating yellow signal, and then due to fail, it's being passed back through up the system, up the network along here to this transmitter. So what I need to do is use this uh, arithmetic combinator here. I need to take in all inputs, uh, add add zero, and then output everything. And then if I put in a red cable from there to there, and from there to there, and disconnect that one, that's going through there now. So that should mean, if we look back at the other end, the Talos spaceship has already gone because suddenly there's no, there's no, uh, it's, it's not waiting to have a load of yellow put into it, where yellow clearly isn't a thing. So that's now on its way back over. We've got, it's a Talos 2. Oh yes, of course, because we, we redesigned it, not because we've got a second one. So that'll fly back over to Talos. It'll land here in Talorbit, and then it'll fill up with all of this stuff, and that means this will start, this, these belts will start flowing again. We'll be able to unload this train. The train can go back down, pick up a load more stuff, and then everything should start working nicely again. A bit of a, um, a bit of a faff, a bit of a hassle, a bit of a, bit of a ridiculous to be honest, um, but I think once, once now, now to fix that, the the uh, the whole system should start working again. <laughs> I talked a bit yesterday about how Tristan and Mark have been expanding our borders down on uh, Norvis, and that has not been a completely safe adventure, um, because Mark managed to die a couple of times, and so that brings his grand total of numbers of deaths up to 17, and puts him back ahead of me again, so I'm now down into third place, which is something I'm very, a place I'm very happy to be, uh, we just need Tristan to die a few more times, so I can have the fewest deaths of the bunch of us, I think that's fairly unlikely to happen though, he seems to be quite good at being careful. <laughs> And so, on to the researches. Uh, in last week we managed to do artillery shooting speeds 3 and 4, and 5, and 6 by the looks of it. So, 3, 4, 5, 6, um, which are, they're, I mean, they're not enormously exciting because they're, they're just us trying to pick off the non-infinite researches again. So, we're, we're just work, we're steadily working our way through those. Those are while we're waiting for me to get the deep space science up and running. In the meantime, though, we also did the research into, we did Deep Space Science Pack 1. So that means once we did that, we meant I was actually able to start making the Deep Space Science Packs. And so I, I needed that to sort of spec out all of the machines and so on. But once we got, got that, once we built that, we could then start do, start making these packs and start doing more advanced sciences as well, which is fantastic because that's what all this is all about. 
And from there, Tristan immediately went for the bio upgrade Intelligence 5. And this gives you a, a lab research productivity boost of another plus 5%. So that's very worth having. It's, I can, I, I, it's a good one to go for straight away because it means every other research you do from then on is going to be a little bit cheaper. So it's worth doing these, these as quickly as you can, as soon as you possibly can, because it just makes all of your labs better. And the labs, as we've discussed, are the things that are most expensive to run. And so you want, you want to have those running as efficiently and productively as possible. I also chucked in the uh, Naquium Cube research because I wanted to get on and be able to start working on Deep Space Science 2. So that's been something we pu pushed through quite quickly. You, you saw me building those yesterday. And then from there, I've gone on to do the anti get antimatter production as well because those are the prereqs for Deep Space Catalog 2, which we've now also researched. So we've got all the quickly down there. So I can now start working on these things as my, ne as my next project next week. So that's going, that's going well. We've also done experimental matter processing, and that has unlocked Matter Catalog 2. So maybe that would be a good thing for somebody else to do if they want something to look at in the in the next stream um, while I'm working on Deep Space Science. I did Matter 1, but there's no reason why somebody else couldn't do Matter 2. Uh, so we get, so that is now, the catalog is now available. Um, there's lots of different things to go into here. So as before, these are essentially combinations of some of the other um, other sciences, but also we're going to need to have matter for those as well, which, where, which is where the experimental matter processing comes in. And this allows us to turn particle stream into, into matter. Uh, and I think possibly there are recipes later on for turning other things into matter as well. But uh, this will be quite useful for um, just getting, eventually this will be very, very useful for getting rid of the overflow of, of junk that we don't need. Instead of turning it into landfill, we can turn it into, into matter and use it for these sort of these sort of processes. And that's basically it. We are also doing Jetpack 4, but that, we're, that's, that's in progress at the moment, as you can see by the green bar across the top of it. Uh, this is going to be a way of, to, to allow us to all travel around even more quickly, so that, that'll be very, very nice. Uh, but at the moment, it's, it's, it's not a high priority, but we thought, well, we might as well get that one. It's, it's relatively cheap, and it's going to be something that's actually useful. So yeah, that's very, very worth going for, I reckon. But it's very nice to have unlocked something new that has given us so much more stuff to play with. So you can see all of these things down here. All of these have become unlocked by doing Deep Space Science 1. Uh, well, or, and they may require other stuff as well. But they, in theory, we're getting, we're getting now lots and lots of extra exciting stuff that we can then start to, start to build, start to put together and, and mess around with. So there's the, the, the research at this, this time has actually been useful rather than just picking off things for the sake of it. And um, we're going to have a lot of exciting um, new tech to play with in the, in the future, uh, future streams, future videos. And so I think that's everything I have for you tonight. I hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll be back for the next one. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow on Tuesday for uh, for another satisfactory stream where I should be playing around with trains because I've unlocked the monorail now, so that sounds very exciting. And I'll be back on Thursday with some more uh, Factorio K2SE. And also keep an eye out on Wednesday if you're um, if you're not a supporter because there's a video that came out last week for the supporters that's coming out on Wednesday for everyone else. Um, and I'll hopefully be able to get another video out then as well, So we'll, we'll but we'll see how that goes. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.